Hey, Lily, welcome to the Soul Aligned Self-Care podcast. Thanks for coming on today. How are you doing? Thanks, Tina. I'm doing great. Thanks so so much for having me here. I'm so excited to have this conversation. I am too. I am too, because I have pretty much written off dating. So mm-hmm. I think that this is a really interesting conversation for us to have. And um, I think even as even even though I think this will be therapeutic for my audience, I think it'll be really therapeutic for myself too. So I'm excited about it. So to get started, if you could tell us a little bit about yourself and maybe a little bit about your journey too. Yeah, totally. Well, yes, I love talking about all things dating and all things love. Um, Hopefully we'll talk about some things that people don't normally talk about because that's one of my biggest values in my life. Um, But yeah, I started on this journey. You know, I always like to say that um, I was born with a big heart a big Mm -hmm. open heart. I'm like at my core, I'm loving, I'm caring, I'm kind. And, you know, growing up in a few different things influenced me, especially when it comes to dating and relationships. And that was that, you know, the models that I have, like my mom and my dad, for example, um, wasn't really a great, great model for a healthy relationship. You know, um, what I've seen in my work with myself and, and clients is that we're, we're either modeled, if we're not modeled like a healthy epic love relationship, we're modeled either like a dominant submissive type of situation or a roommate style situation. So, um, my parents were definitely the, the former, like the, the submissive and dominant thing was the thing that I most saw in my household, um, growing up in an abusive, you know, traumatic environment, going through my life, um, with failed relationship after, quote unquote, failed relationship. What I learned was that, you know, and through my own journey and my development and my healing, um, what I learned and kind of like really fast forward to today, what I learned was that, I don't know if you were ever this person, Tina, in, in your relationships or if anyone that's listening was the same way, but in my last relationship, for example, I was the one that held all of the weight in the relationship. I was the one pushing the relationship forward. I was the the one learning. I was the one growing. I was the one learning the love languages of myself and my partner to try to make it better. I was the Mm -hmm. one learning better communication styles. Um, And if you've grown up with these things in your life, what what I've learned through my healing and the healing of my clients is that the when you're in a relationship with someone who doesn't want to be there or doesn't want to learn and doesn't want to grow one of my coaches said this one time is that you cannot polish a turd okay <laughs> i like that <laughs> okay so the importance of especially if if you are like me and i think that you you are based off what i know about you and if you are like me the the importance of finding and picking the right person from the beginning which is in dating Mm-hmm. is so, so important, right? Yeah. And it is very hard to pick the right person if we haven't done the healing inside of ourselves to relearn how to listen to our intuition, to speak up for our needs and our wants and desires, to know what our needs and our wants and desires are, to date with confidence and alignment and authenticity. If we have all of these things that have happened to us in our lives, and there's a lot of blocking happening inside of us, subconscious and unconscious mostly, because I know that you've done your work and I know your your audience have done their work too, but you know all of the things that are blocking us are really what's happening on the inside of ourselves. And that's why I think it's so important um, that that we focus on dating from the beginning so we don't get into situations where we get stuck, where we stay longer than we're supposed to, where we are really kind of holding our breath for two or three months, not knowing if this person is right for us or not. So the healing work that we do inside of ourselves is about, again, learning how to discern quickly who is right for us and who is not, how to speak up, how to say yes when it really means yes. Like if you've had trauma in your past, listening to your gut does not work because yeah. your, your gut is is a little bit confused about, you know, wh- about what's happening inside of you, right? Like, mm-hmm. so there's this whole thing about um, dating, you know, my colleagues, for example, will look at dating from the outside in. Right. So like what to put on your dating profile, Um, your friends and your family will say, oh, just go have fun. 
I don't know about you, Tina, but if Lily goes out and goes and has fun, it does not end well, right? Yeah. <laughs> the fun part of Lily is the part that self-sacrifices, okay? Uh -huh. And that's not what we want, right, in yeah. an aligned partnership. So that's kind of, that's how I got here um, yeah. into dating because it's so important if you really want to call in an epic love, long-term committed relationship. Yeah. Yeah. And I think, yeah, I have so many things that I could say to everything you just said, but I think, um, I think the best thing to start with is learning to heal that part of you where you do start, you know, you can trust your gut again. And I, I think that, I think it's important to do that before you like really jump into any type of serious relationship, because it's a part of you that, that you, you need that connection with yourself. It's almost like if you lost your sense of smell, your sense of sight, or your hearing, would you try to repair? Wouldn't that be the first thing that you were like, oh my God, I have to mm -hmm. fix this because mm -hmm. I feel like your intuition is just as important and healing that part of you is important um, to be able to, it's almost like being able to trust yourself and that mm -hmm. gut feeling. Absolutely. And then also on top of that, I feel like being able to look at yourself, not place blame on others and being able to like, look at yourself and say, okay, if you, if you notice like a pattern of something you're doing over and over again, then, you know, there's something to be said there that, you know, like, uh, that, that's, that has everything to do with me. You know, it's not like, if you see to yourself, oh, all men are the same and they all, they all do this and that whatever, then that's just a pattern. That's just some kind of a lesson you need to learn. That's something you need to shift in yourself mm -hmm. because there's a reason why that particular type of person is showing up for you mm -hmm. um, each time. And that's when I stopped dating, honestly, when I was like, wait a minute here. And I was like, I need to like go inward and mm -hmm. look at myself because I'm getting the same thing every time. And I, yes. it's not something that I want. So why am I getting yeah. this? 100%, 100%. The outside, the inside of ourselves, again, this is kind of what no one talks about in dating, right? They'll talk about, you know, in, even personal development is, is I think wrong in some cases about this because we've been taught that, and this is true, but what we're missing these little nuanced pieces about self-love and self-love, you know, we'll hear, um, you have to love yourself in order for someone to love you, right? But the thing is, is that self-love along with love outside of ourselves has become transactional. Mm -hmm. And self, you know, self-love, I think is two parts compassion to one part action, right? And the, the tough thing about where, you know, where women that come to me are is that they are, they have done really well in their lives at overcoming and healing and being quote unquote resilient. They're done really well in business or with money, but that love and relationship piece is just really something that they cannot seem to get right. Mm -hmm. And what it is, is parts of ourselves, like what you said about patterns that you, you don't like that you're seeing in, in our lives. What it is, is the patterns are really connected to wounded parts of us inside of ourselves, right? So yeah. are our, you know, quote unquote, limiting beliefs, right? And for women that have done all a lot of work, you have done a re really good job of getting to the conscious elements of, of your healing, but the patterns as within, so without, right? And I say this with love, like just what you were saying, Tina, so there, there's something unconscious or subconscious happening inside of us, whether if like, for example, if um, in the dating archetypes that I have, I have four women, uh, feminine dating archetypes. I know you took the quiz is so <laughs> like the, the goddess woman, for example, has done a lot of work in, in her in her healing and her development. She has written out the qualities and values and characteristics that she wants in her next partner. She's written a letter you know, that's what everyone, everyone teaches, mm -hmm. but what is showing up for her on the other, other side is emotionally unavailable men, men that are um, dysregulated, men that cannot meet her where she needs to be met in whatever way. And what that tells me, if that's a pattern, what that tells me as a coach and who's gone through this and done this like hundreds and thousands of hours is that there's some disconnect between inside of her and that's the work, the work that we mm -hmm. do together. There is a disconnect between whether it be um, there's a perfectionist piece, that per a part of her inside of her that needs to be healed or looked at. There's a part of her that really needs to be in control um, that needs to be looked at and healed. There's a part of her that 
needs to work on boundaries, for example, you know, time boundaries, energetic boundaries, boundaries, family, job, whatever pattern is pattern. But here's what I love to say about this is your patterns aren't you. Mm -hmm. They are just a part of you that is screaming to be healed. Yes. And until we heal that, that, that we will not change that with gratitude lists, affirmations, mindset shifts, breath work, yoga. But until we get to those unconscious and subconscious things, then we'll start to see the changes inside of ourselves, with which are replicated outside of ourselves. Yeah. And I would say that that's probably one of the hardest steps to take, mm -hmm. especially if you're continuously dating and you're not willing to just like take a step back and really mm -hmm. like focus on yourself for a little while. You know, um, if you can't like take that step back and like look at yourself and see how you're showing up and see what, what that part is that need to be healed. And you're like caught in the hustle bustle of it. You're just going to be stuck in that same pattern for like a lifetime, probably, you know? Agreed. Yeah. And Agreed. so I, I discovered what I think I was, you know, like my pattern, so to speak, um, was that I, I wasn't showing up as myself. So I was like the people pleaser. So I, I wasn't, um, you know, I was in like a very verbally abusive relationship for a long, long time. And so it took me a while to really build up my confidence and reconnect that connection with myself, where, like I said earlier, trusting your intuition, trusting your gut. And I worked really hard to get there. But then I noticed that all of my, once I started doing this work, every single relationship I ever had changed because mm -hmm. those relationships weren't authentic because of me. Mm -hmm. Right. And because I was showing up as what I thought they wanted me to be. And this included mm -hmm. like my, my closest friends, like my girlfriends, mm -hmm. women that I was friends with for 20, 30 years, you know, like just having, seeing the shift happen, it was terrifying. Mm -hmm. So like, um, you know, like people moved out of my life and new people moved in. Mm -hmm. Um, once I started to connect as my authentic self and then now that I, I had a backbone, so to speak, and I was setting boundaries and I knew exactly what I want. And mm -hmm. at my age, I'm 55. I was like, I'm not willing to like settle. I'd rather just be alone for the rest of my life. And, mm -hmm. you know, like I'm happy, I'm good. Um, you know, I'm not, you know, a lot of women that are younger are searching for like that relationship to say, want to have children, stuff like that. You know, like, so I've been there, done that. And so I'm kind of like, it would be really nice to have a partner, to have someone to share my life with, but I don't like need it. And mm -hmm. I'm not willing to like bend out of, out of my life, out of my, my boundaries and the things that are important to me. And it's not saying, it's not me saying I will not compromise. It's just, I'm not willing to bend for having like a hundred percent a partner and not mm -hmm. be like someone's mother or take care of them or Absolutely. like a sex object or whatever, Absolutely. you know? And so mm -hmm. that's what I learned, um, about myself. So here I am and I'm just kind of like, yeah, whatever happens, happens. Mm -hmm. Um, but I do go back and forth. What are the art archetypes again? Like, cause I can't remember what mine was yeah. called, but I was like, yes, that's spot on. That's me. <laughs> It's so funny when people take the archetype quiz and they're like, oh my God, Lily, you're seeing me way too much. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'll go over those. I do want to say like there is – okay, so what I do is very unique and it's bespoke and it's very nuanced because, yes, I agree with you. There is a time where we need to kind of wall up our heart and heal and heal, right? And there's also a time – which is amazing. Like, and here's where, here's where the rubber meets the road some, so, sometimes um, because yes, you're right. We don't need men. We don't mm -hmm. need anything we can do. We are hyper independent. We have, we have, we've done it. We've been through it. We've overcome. We're good. We're solid. And there is then that's a beautiful place to be, right? And it's probably not a place that we it what for me, it wasn't a place that I've ever been or experienced in my life, right? Mm -hmm. And the when I got into this healing work specifically in my life about dating and relationship, um I knew that I wanted someone in my life, but I knew that I because of the past, I knew that I didn't want them to complete me. I didn't want them to 
take away from me. I wanted them to enhance me mm-hmm. and fulfill me, right? We are already, yes. you know, when you have healed enough so that your light, you know, people always say in the spiritual world, like, oh, let your light shine, right? It is very hard to quote unquote, let your light shine on the outside if your light does not feel safe on the inside of yourself. And that is the healing work. And so when it comes to love and fulfillment, I always like to say, like, if we've done enough work, our light is pretty bright. But what's Mm -hmm. amazing in this kind of epic love relationship when we find the right person is that it's like a dial on an old school radio. It just gets turned up. Or, you know, and it's not because, again, that we are incomplete or something is wrong with us or we need to be fixed. But when we have that person in our lives, there is an opportunity to do that. So here's why I'm saying this is because. Yeah. In my programs, for example, my programs are extended in length for two reasons. One is because we need to, like healing takes a period of time. It takes to rewire our nervous system, to rewire our mind, to rewire our body. It takes time. So um, the like the the length of my programs are extended so I can help women get to where they want to go. Mm-hmm. And part of my program is for the first two or three months, all we do is foundational healing. So you're right. There is a time to focus inside of ourselves. And my challenge with that is that there, I call dating trigger town. Like, da- <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So my challenge with that is that dating, everything in dating that is going to come up that's dysregulating, that's triggering, that is patterns that you've seen can kind of only happen when you are out there dating. But what's mm-hmm. different is if you go through dating with someone like me or a therapist or a coach or, you know, whatever it is that you decide to do is that you have an objective person taking a look at your triggers and your blind spots instead of your friends, instead of your family who don't make yeah. you feel seen, heard and understood. Yeah. So there are things that happen in the dating process that are only going to come up in the dating process. So with love, you know, I always like to say like – you and I or whoever it is, you know, that I work with can hold hands and go through trigger town for all of the things that are going to come up. I love that. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's so funny, right? Yeah, I know, but it's true. You know, it is. So you're many, right. Yeah. There's so many things that are going to come up. Like if I was a business coach, I wouldn't be like being like, okay, well, you know, um, our goal is going to be to get to 10 K months and um, you're just going to hang back. We're going to do a little bit of healing before we do action. Right. Mm -hmm. It's within the action that the triggers are going to come up. Right. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's one thing I just want to plug and say is that there is an archetype called the fortress woman. Mm -hmm. Um, So if anyone's listening, I have a quiz over 2000 (laughs) women have taken the, the feminine dating archetype quiz. It's a dating archetype gut.com, but the fortress woman is in that pattern, that archetype of being really okay inside of herself and walling up her heart because there's, you know, love has been pain in the past. Mm-hmm. So there's, you know, there isn't a lot of self-trust with, like you talked about with the fortress woman, because love means pain. So, you know, what happens is, is that she kind of closes up her heart a little bit because there is no self-trust. She doesn't know how to pick who to invite into her heart and who to not. So it's just like, eh, I'm good. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So, so that's, you know, that's a good entryway into your question about the archetype, but there are four of them. Mm -hmm. So what are, what are the four archetypes? Okay, cool. (laughs) Um, So just a few things about the archetypes is that this was me, this was God and my higher self really conspiring to, to show me in my journey that, there were different fa- phases that I went to, went through, and there are four different archetypes. But archetype, you know, again, sp- people can get caught in them, mm-hmm. um, and that's when you know there's an opportunity to heal whatever next layer there is to heal. Um, so that combined with you know attachment theory, God was like, there is something here, Lily, and here what happened, you know, is the dating archetypes came up, um, the chill woman is the first one. She's super familiar with overwhelm, anxiety, and overthinking in the dating process. Like typically this will happen. This will pop up after like 24, 48, 72 hours after not hearing from someone. Mm -hmm. Um, The chill woman uh, does sometimes sleep with her dating interest a lot sooner than she wants to because she really wants love. She really wants connection. And she can convince herself, parts of her can convince herself that she's okay with sleeping with this person. 
Um, but she's really not. Either she is shutting down the parts of her that want love or um, she's kind of putting aside and maybe like internally gaslighting herself a little bit um, in order to get connection and love, right? Mm -hmm. So the chill woman also attracts a lot of men who just want to hang out and chill, like has really no direction. Yeah. Um, and she says yes, again, because she really wants connection and love. The opportunity for the chill woman to heal is about boundaries on the inside of herself, the outside of herself. Also, there are parts of her that aren't feeling seen and understood. Um, and she really needs to do the healing work to understand what her needs and wants and desires are. That's like the first step for the chill woman. Does that make sense? Yeah, no. And I like how you explain it. It's almost like steps that a lot of people will go through go from mm -hmm. one to the next, to the next, mm -hmm. to the next. That makes sense. Totally. Yeah. I was a chill woman for decades. Yeah. I mean, decades. Definitely I was a chill me woman. Too. Yeah. 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 Um, the fortress woman we already talked about a little bit. She has, um, the wall, like the, the size of the great wall of China around her heart, basically yeah, it's very hard. To... <laughs> yeah. Again, it's so funny, right? Yeah. Um, she's been hurt by love before, but the only way to defend her heart is to not let someone in. Here's what's funny about the fortress woman. If you're listening, fortress woman, I see you and I know this is triggering. But when I was the fortress woman, I on my vision board had this big, beautiful mansion of a house, no partner, but like a million cats and dogs. You know, that was how... <laughs> That was how I was going to get my people love. People getting called out today. I know. <laughs> oh, it hurts. Um, so yeah. she, you know, the fortress woman is her work. If she's open to doing it, which I know that you're okay. I know you're okay alone. And I know that you can put yourself out there and still be safe inside of yourself. That That's the work. The work for the fortress woman is to look at the vulnerability inside of herself. What parts of her um, has she pushed away? pushed down or maybe even like gaslighted or, or not was, you know, haven't been looking at. Self-trust is a lot of work the fortress woman um, has to do in learning how to listen to her intuition. Those are her next steps. Um, the goddess woman is the next one. And the goddess woman is mostly I work with the chill woman or the goddess woman because uh -huh. the chill woman is really open to changing those, those patterns. Also the goddess woman and the goddess woman is super confused and frustrated with the dating scene and love in particular. She's into personal growth work. She's into personal fulfillment. Her, what's, what's difficult for the goddess woman is she recognizes this like imposter syndrome in dating because on the outside with her friends, her family, maybe her social media profiles, um, she's typically like a coach, a healer, maybe an executive, and she leads people. She's a leader in some ways, but also a helper. Mm -hmm. Um, her outward perception of herself and what's happening inside of her is very different than what's happening on the inside of herself. So there's a disconnect between what she's portraying and what's happening, especially in dating and relationships. And dating and relationships tends to be the last piece in the goddess woman's kind of psyche and growth and development that you just can't get to. Mm -hmm. um, typically, she attracts men that are kind of lower like less less developed than she is so she becomes like you said earlier like their their mother their teacher their coach or their healer hmm. <laughs> i know right okay <laughs> yes yeah. um so like deep down she really wants to be coveted and she really wants to be chased but there's a level of vulnerability inside of herself that she has not gotten to quite yet emotional vul a vulnerability the healing for the goddess woman is a lot about perfectionism and control. And this is why this is hard. This is why this step is really, really hard to take into healing these parts of her is because she has gotten to where she is today. She is really resilient. Um, she's been through a lot of stuff. And her perfectionism and control have really got her to this place that she is today. But the last layer for her in the dating and relationship piece is, and it's not about letting go. You know, that's a big misconception. It's about understanding, loving, seeing, hearing parts of her that are really, really leading her perfectionism and her control and her probably regular life. Again, a pattern is a pattern is a pattern, but especially in dating and relationships. Okay. Yeah. I could see that. Yeah. That's a, that's probably another, that's probably really difficult to get past. And, uh, and what is the last one? 
The last one's the magnetic woman. Yeah. And that's the that's the woman that I aspire to be at least 80% of the time. I've I've healed a lot of my perfectionist wounds inside of myself, a lot of my control wounds as well. Um and the magnetic woman knows who she is and what she wants. She's oh, yes. she's discerning of who is good for who or who excuse me, who is good for her and who is not very quickly. And that's in regular life, not just in dating, but she's able, there's a connection now between her body and her mind. The the um, goddess woman, pretty much every archetype besides a magnetic woman is very um, cerebral, like lots of overthinking, lots of um, perseverating, lots of, um, you know, uh, trying to figure out what's happening in your head and then the other person's head as well. So the healing connects the body and and the mind so that they are both on the same page, right? And so that's how that's where our intuition lies as women, right? That's that's where our self trust comes. Is again, listening to your gut is not as easy as just say, oh, I'm going to listen to my gut because your gut is actually coming. If you haven't done your unconscious and subconscious healing work, your gut is actually your trauma, mm -hmm. <laughs> right? Yeah. So the magnetic woman, her internal worth and her magnet magnetism has moved from her head to her body. Um, she's also learned to speak up for her needs and her wants and desires and is okay either way, whether she gets what she wants or not. Like that's that's a move from the goddess woman to the magnetic woman. The goddess woman is probably really good at communicating, um, but there's some type of attachment, some type of anxiety and attachment from when she speaks up. There's an expectation for someone to to change or to say mm -hmm. what she wants or something like that. So the magnetic woman is really patient because she is honoring of herself. She speaks up for ne her needs and her wants and desires. And that's really that's really all that needs to happen because no one in her life and she has never spoken up for herself before. Right. Yeah. So there's an internal calmness and compassion that comes from the mag magnetic woman as well. It's so interesting because that's the one that I got, but I still feel like I have like one foot in the goddess kind mm. of, the, you know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. I don't feel like I'm completely there now that you're talking about it, but like when you said the connection between the mind and the body, like I legit, and this doesn't, this isn't just in dating. This is just in regular people, anything like I cannot move forward with anyone. If I just get that feeling like I've just mm -hmm. like, we're, we're back in the day when I was like, you know, that first one. I was just like, yeah, just like, yeah, it's, it's all fine. You know, now yeah, we'll see like, what happens. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And now I'm like that right there, or that one thing that happened or just, the, just the feeling I got being with that person. I having a conversation with the person. It's like a, a feeling of ick in my body. Mm -hmm. You know, not, I thought that bad, that person is a bad person, but it's an ick for me. Like, mm -hmm. I don't know if mm -hmm. ick is the right word, but like, mm -hmm. it's just like, I can't even move forward it would be like a lie in my own body. And mm -hmm. I just, I feel it on that level. Yeah, definitely don't want to discount that. But I want to, I want to, I understand that. And mm -hmm. I'll, to add to the conversation, here's what I've learned about this. Like people say, you know, there's, it's all over again, Instagram and whatever. Like if it's not a hell yes, it's a hell no. Mm -hmm. I don't believe that anymore. And here's why I did have to go through that phase. Right. Mm -hmm. And that was like goddess woman phase really more than anything. Here's why I don't believe that is because trauma, things that have happened to us in the past are parts of us um, really see the world as black and white. Right. Mm -hmm. Either I'm all in, you know, like how many times have you said like I'm all in person, I'm an all in person or it's either like anything in your life. Again, is it black or is it white? Is it hell yes or is it hell no? The movement. This is a very, very hard step, right? Because a lot of time, you know, that's all we, we see as far as spiritual work or development. Um, the movement from being in the gray area, like the magnetic woman can be in the gray area because there is nothing that is going, nothing or no one or any instance or any experience is going to take her off her path. Again, this is not a perfect thing. Like I, I make mistakes, of course, in my life. Like I have, I'm imperfect a lot. I give myself twenty percent of imperfections, which is, you know, to parts of me, it's like, come on, girl, yeah. <laughs> you know. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but trauma will tell us that it's either black or white. Mm -hmm. So the work is: can you stay in? And this is 
this is really this is nuanced and I don't want people like that are listening to this to be like well Lily said just to stay in the ick right like we never (laughs) want to be in an abusive situation ever right like there's a very but we're past that right like we've done the healing work we're past that because we you know we've established a great life for ourselves since then but since we're here can we how long can we stay in the unknown and still be safe in ourselves mm-hmm. that's the work it's that's the resi- that's really the resiliency of our nervous system and being able to again determine who is right for her, us and who is not or what is right for us and what is not and i'm not saying again like if it's gross i'm not saying to stay by yeah. any means and god speaks to me in the space and the more that I healed my trauma, because again, I'm coming from a place of, if it's not a hell yes, it's a hell no with a black and white thinking, you know, very like, you know, very like segmented and, and, you know, that's the cognitive mind, mm-hmm. but the body, if it's safe inside of ourselves, if there's space inside of ourselves where we can connect with our highest self, connect with what, who we are and what we want, like you were talking about this authenticity, then that is the space that I get guidance from God, higher self, higher power, universe, whatever word, spirit, whatever word that connects with, with people. And that tells us, especially in dating and relationship, is this a person that I can hang back a little bit and maybe that was, you know, and, and see a little bit more about who they are. Can I give them a little bit of space about maybe it was a mistake? And again, I'm not This is very nuanced because I'm not saying to do that, but I'm saying that there is an opportunity for us to find out who people are and stay true true to ourselves, which is a skill that we haven't known in the past, which is that's why it's hard. That's why it's an edge. Yeah, I think I can see what you're saying. So kind of like um, almost like, you know, because of the trauma that we've had in the past, you know, something that comes up, you know, might seem like an ick, or it could just be almost something that triggered you in a way that um, might be misconceived, or you might be over over judging it or viewing it the wrong way. And to maybe give it a little more time or space to make sure that it's what you think it is and not just something way more superficial. So giving it some space, Um, but yeah, I understand what you're saying. And yeah, I think I don't have any tolerance for abuse anymore or any type of like, yeah, it's just those red flags just like are instantaneously there. And, and I think because I was inside of that behavior for so long, like 20 years or so, like I know like all of those little, um, gaslighting Mm -hmm. (laughs) Mm -hmm. uh, procedures or whatever you want to call Mm -hmm. them, but there is that it, I there is some truth to that what you're saying because I feel like you know I could definitely prejudge someone very quickly just by a comment they made or like well they like this movie so they must be this type of person or and yeah. like end of him yeah <laughs> you know <laughs> yeah I hear you I yeah. hear you and that's like that's the per- perfectionism and control that we're talking about in the yes. with the goddess woman yeah. and yeah. What's great, what I like, I will plug myself and say what I love about my programs is that it's healing, but it's also we we set up the, a specific for the client accountability filter dating boundaries system. Mm-hmm. Like I love systems. Systems mm-hmm. are sexy to me. So we set up a process and a system where – you know, if you if parts of you are open and okay with understanding who this person is, then we can go in there and kind of dip a toe into finding out who this person is. And it doesn't have to be long. It doesn't have to be extended. It doesn't have to be, um, you know, like it doesn't have to be like I'm going to go out on a date with this person. Like I can't tell you how many dates that I was I when I was dating that I went on where I wanted to leave within five minutes, but I felt stuck there because it was at a dinner. Yeah. You know? <laughs> You know what I mean? So Uh what we do is we create a process and a system for you. So it's not energetically taxing and it's not energetically draining. And we can give that person space before cutting them off, right? Mm -hmm. Because of these perfection and all while healing the stuff on the inside. And then it's like, it's not 
that dating sucks. It's that your the experience that we're having with dating sucks. So how do yeah. we change the experience, right? Mm-hmm. So that's yeah, that's yeah, all that I do. Yeah, that's a, yeah. How do we change? That's a whole nother episode, I think. <laughs> well, to like end um, mm-hmm. off this conversation, just one last question, and because um, this topic came up came up over and over again as we were talking, was mm-hmm. the intuition topic. Mm-hmm. Would you say that that connection with self is like probably one of the most important things that we need to? I don't want to really say focus on, but like heal, repair, work on, expand, whatever you, whatever word you want to use. Would you say that that's really one of the most important things we need to um, think about when we're moving forward? Absolutely. The most important thing. Yeah. You know what, as within, so without. And so for the goddess woman, the perfect perfectionism and control. And again, this is not conscious until we bring it to the conscious, right? This is definitely subconscious and unconscious, but there are parts of her inside of herself that are very controlling within mm-hmm. her, like her inner critic or her um, perfectionist part, her her part that really likes to control. There are things happening inside of her that w- the result of healing those things is that her thoughts, her behaviors, her beliefs, and her emotions are all lining up with who she is and what she wants, right? Mm -hmm. But inside of that goddess woman, inside of her, there is a part of her that is very perfectionistic and mean to herself on the inside. Mm -hmm. As within, so without, right? Yeah. So that is her, that's why healing is so foundational at this level. And again, this is like, you know, I have clients that have been in therapy for for decades and come to me. Um, and again, I'm a coach, not a therapist, but for whatever reason has not been able to get to those three or four levels deeper than what they, where they need to meet themselves at. And that's what I facilitate, but Mm -hmm. absolutely it has everything to do with self. And it's more than, oh, I just need more self-love when your behaviors and who you're accepting into your life don't reflect the love that you have for yourself, then that that's your work on the inside. Yeah, for sure. Absolutely. That's a perfect way to end this conversation. I could have used you about 10 years ago, Lily. So, <laughs> but you're here now. So I am here now. <laughs> how can people connect with you? Yeah. Thank you so much for this time, Tina. You're amazing. Um, if anyone, like I said, wants to go take the feminine dating archetype quiz, it's at datingarchetype.com. It will help. It's two minutes. It will help you reveal your blocks to love and find your true love match. Mm -hmm. And then also if anyone wants to connect with me on social, I'm at all the socials at Lily Bewley. Perfect. That'll all be in the show notes. Thanks again for coming on. Thanks for your knowledge and everything. Thanks for my little mini therapy session. And yeah, I knew I was going to be getting called out somehow today. I knew it. I knew it was- <laughs> it's all with love. It's all with love. Yeah. No, it is. It's good. It's perfect. So thanks again for coming on. My pleasure. <laughs>